So before we start the integration, we need to first of all um, get to familiar with the antidote, right? So we will ask the question like this. So if I ask you the question, hey, what is the derivative? What is the derivative of f of x is equal to x squared, for example? What you will answer me? You will tell me, hey, derivative of this function is equal to the tx, right? Now, we're interested on, like, inverse questions, okay? Now, I will give you the answer, and you need to tell me the question, okay? So, the same thing. So if I say, hey, the answer is, is like this. Answer is like this. So f prime of x is equal to the x cubed. Tell me, what is the question? What is the question? So, okay, so the question is, what is the derivative of f x in the power of 4 divided to the 4, right? So today we will, so this thing is called the antiderivative, right? So previously we took the derivative from the x square and found the tx. Now I'm giving you the answer. I'm giving you the result after you took the derivative, right? And I'm asking you the actual function, right? The actual function is like this, plus the constant, right? So it's, it's like this, right? So this operation is called antiderivation, okay? Yes? So it will be always like this. So if you would like to find the derivative, there are a lot of rules we've learned, right? The chain rule, the substitution rule, a lot of rules. And like most of the time, we can figure out how to find the derivative, right? But now the question is different. So there are less rules now to find the antiderivative, right? So, it, it's a, you need to be really experienced in finding the derivative in order to figure out the answer, uh, the question, right? I will also always ask you, hey, the question is like this, tell me the, uh, so, sorry. I will always ask you, hey, the answer is like this, tell me the question, okay? This is the concept of the antiderivative, okay? So let us make the table of the, like a standard function. So this will be the function. And it will be its antiderivative. or sometimes we call this as a big F, okay? Small f is the function. If the function is x in the power of n, what is its antiderivative? x in the power of n plus 1 divided to the n plus 1, right? Plus the constant, right? So what is the idea behind this? What is the relationship between the small f and the big F here? The relationship is the derivative of the big F is equal to the small f, right? So I'm asking you the answer. I'm, I'm telling you the answer. So the answer is x in the power of n. Tell me the question. You need, to, you, you need to make the question. So what is the derivative of x in the power of n plus 1 divided to the n plus 1? This is x in the power of n. Right? You can always check this. So if I say you, what is the antiderivative of the sine of x? You need to tell me what? Minus cosine of x plus the constant, right? Why? Because if you take the derivative from the minus cosine, it will be equal to the plus sign, right? So if I say, hey, your function is the cosine, tell me its antiderivative. It will be plus sine of x plus c, right? Okay. What else? Uh, okay, so e in the power of x. So this will be, again, e in the power of x, right? So 1 over x, what is the antiderivative? ln of x. What about ln x? So x multiplied to the ln x, or, or something like this, right? Or plus something. So it will be 1 
minus 1, y minus x, minus x, right? So, yes? So what is the derivative of the x multiplied to the ln x? We need to use the multiplication rule, right? Derivative of the x, which is 1, multiplied to the ln x, plus derivative of the ln x, which is 1 over x, multiplied to the x, which is 1, right? Minus derivative of the x is 1, right? 1 with the minus 1, they will cancel each other, and what is left is just the ln x, right? The antiderivative of the ln x is x multiplied to the ln x minus x. How do I know this? No, no. How I figure out the answer. From the experience, right? <laughs> Probably I solved this problem before, right? So, like, you see, so the only way how to figure out the antiderivative is you need to be experienced. You need to solve a lot of problems. If you solve this problem previously, for, for example, if you, if you figure out this derivative of the x ln x minus x, then you, you would know that its derivative is equal to the ln x, okay? So in order to answer, in order to make the questions by, make, by, by knowing the answers, you need to, you, you, need to, you need to know the answer, you need to know the question. So you need to know this kind of questions. You have seen them previously, right? So that is why I would suggest you to do a lot of exercises on derivatives in integrals as well in order to be like experienced in this. Okay? There is no way to figure out the antiderivative. So you need to be like you need to do a lot of practice. Okay, this is what we call the antiderivative. Then what? One over x. So, but so we're talking the concepts here, right? The concepts, the idea. Ah, huh? yeah. So some some functions. So we will come back to this. So we're just introdu introducing the integrals, right? So we will learn about the inter in integration techniques. But I would like to ask you, like, a differentiation is really easy. Let's compare with the integration, okay? So take it more serious and try to do more exercises on integration. So now let's start about the numerical integration. At some point, you will have the software project as well. Maybe in calculus. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let's see. What we say is the integration is the area under the curve, right? For example, if I would like to find the integration of this curve in this region between A and B, this is my curve f of x. What I need to do is I need to find the area, right? So if this area would be a rectangle or just a triangle or some geometric object, I could find the area by splitting this into many small regions, right? But since this region is neither rectangle nor triangle, uh, I can find this, but approximately, right? What was the idea? The idea was to split this region between A and B into the n equidistant small interval, okay? So if I divide or split the interval between A and B into this n small intervals, what will be the width of the each interval? What is the width of the each interval? So B minus A divided to the n. So this will be the width, okay? So a plus b over t gives you the middle point, okay? So b minus a gives you the length, right, between a and b, and you need to divide this length into the n, right? Now, I've got many n small regions, right? What they are there? So this is a n, a plus delta x, right? This is the first one. The second one was the, will be a plus delta x and a plus 2 delta x, right? This will be the second, and so on. And the last one will be a plus n minus 1 delta x and b. Okay? So why n, a plus n multiplied to the delta x gives you b? Because if you substitute the delta x to be b minus a divided to the n, it will be equal to the b, right? So a 
plus n multiplied to the delta x. So this equal to the a plus n multiplied delta x plus b minus a divided to the n, right? If you divide this one and this one, you need to uh, you need to eliminate the a's and you will have the b's, okay? So the last interval will be a plus n minus 1 delta x and the b, okay? So I've got n intervals, right? Why we needed this n intervals? In order to find the area. Yes, so we need to sum them, right? Okay. So what I will do is I will choose the right endpoint of the intervals as the sample point. Okay. So let me choose the right endpoint and let me evaluate the functions daily, the height, right? So if I would like to make the rectangle with the width delta x and with the height, what will be the height here? f of x1, right? So let me call this as x1, right? f of x1. What will be the area? f of x1 multiplied to the delta x. But it will be the area, not the area under the curve, right? It will be the area of this rectangle, right? Because you need to multiply. We're multiplying the height to the width, right? If I multiply f of x1 to the delta x, it gives me the area of this rectangle, right? Now, I will choose the second point, second end point. It will be here. If I multiply f of x2 to the delta x, I will find this area, right? Again, the area not under the curve, right? This is the area of the rectangle. So plus f of x2 multiplied to the delta x plus. If I choose the third point, it will be like this, right? If I choose the this point, it will be like this. And if I choose the last point, it will be like this, right? So plus n, so on f of x n multiplied to the delta x, right? So the summation, I can write down this as a summation. How I can write this down? f of x i multiplied to the delta x. What I need to write here in, the, in terms of the indices of the summation? i from 1 to the n, right? So the summation will be equal to me roughly to the area under the curve. Do you understand this from the engineering point of view, right? I choose the right end point as the sample point. Then I figure out a lot of rectangles. And by finding the total area of those rectangles, I figure out more or less the area under the curve, right? Why more or less? Why approximately? Because there are these regions. Do you see them? They're like a extra out of the curve, right? So your end answer will be a little bit more than the actual curve, right? So what if you will choose this point, the left point? The left point will be here. This will be the first rectangle. The second rectangle is you will choose this point, and you will need to make this kind of rectangle, right? This one, this one, and so on, right? Less than expected, right? So now let's do an example. An example. Let's say we're given a curve. Y is equal to the x squared, okay? Where x changes from 0 to the 1. So find me the area by taking n to be equal to the find, 5. Find me the area using the rectangle. Okay? So if your ID ends with the odd digit, then you need to take the left end point. Okay? Make the uh, intervals, first of all. Okay? Five intervals. Then take the left end point to make the rectangles. If your ID is even, then take the right end point. All of you should do this. I, I'm going to show you. Now, yes. What do you mean? Like not familiar? <laughs> if it is odd, choose the left point. If it is even, choose the right point. If the last digit of your ID. So it is like this. So let me do the intervals, okay? So if I would like to make five small intervals between 0 and 1, what will be the width of each of them? So it will be 1 minus 0, b minus a, divided to the 5, because n is 5, right? So this will be 1 over 5, right? 
So the first interval will be equal to the 0 and 1 over 5, right? The second one is 1 over 5 and 2 over 5. The third one is 2 over 5 and 3 over 5. The fourth is 3 over 5 and 4 over 5. And the last one is 4 over 5 and 1. Right? Five intervals. So the you need to use this formula, summation of the f of x i multiplied to the delta x in order to find the area under this curve, right? Under the parabola, the standard parabola. So if your ID is odd, then you need to choose the left endpoint. If your ID is even, then you need to choose the right endpoint as the sample point, right? In both of the cases, you will have five sample points, right? Summation from i to be equal to the one until five, right? You need to evaluate the functions value at this point and multiply them at the end to the delta x. So for the last one, it is 0, 1 over 5, 2 over 5, 3 over 5, and 4 over 5. For the even IDs, it will be 1 over 5, 2 over 5, 3 over 5, 4 over 5, and 1. Is it clear what to do? The last one will be like this. I need to choose the x1 to be equal to the 0, x2 to be equal to the 1 over 5, x3 is equal to the 2 over 5, x4 is equal to the 3 over 5, x5 is equal to the 4 over 5. Right? I chose the left end point. Okay? So I need to now evaluate the functions daily at those points. Okay? So what was my function? It was x squared. Right? Do you remember? Yes? x squared. Now, what is the f of x1? 0. What is the f of x2? 1 over 25. What is the f of x3? 4 over 25. What is the f of x4? 9 over 25. And f of x5 is equal to the 16 over 25, right? So what we need to do is we need to find the area under the curve by summing up f of x i multiplied to the delta x by taking the i from 1 to the 5. Okay? Delta x is equal to the 1 over 5. So this is delta x. Okay? So you just need to sum all the values and multiply this at the end to the 1 over 5. So this will be 0 plus 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16 divided to the 25. And multiply this to the delta x, which is 1 over 5. Right? So the answer will be equal to 35 over 25 multiplied to the 5, right? This is 7 over 5 multiplied to the, sorry, 1 over 5. This is 7 over 25. Yes? What? 30? Thirty, six, and six. Okay, so you need to do roughly this thing at home by taking the right end point, and you need to write down the program as well. Okay, in the software project, you will be given a function. Okay, and you will your your program should ask me three things: a, b, and n. Okay, by taking a, b, and n, it should tell me the answer by the, of the integration. Okay, numerical integration. Then it should tell me the answer uh, uh, of the actual integration, and also it should tell me the error, right? How do I need to know the error? I need to subtract the actual result from the approximate result, right? So what will be 6 over 25, by the way? 6 over 25. So 6 over 25 is 0.24, right? So 0.24. So what is the actual result? The actual result is integration of this curve from 0 to the 1, right? So let, let us go a little bit further. We will learn this now, right, or later. So this will be x cubed over 3 from 0 to the 1. This will be simply 1 over 3, right? So which is roughly 0.32. Whatever we, we are doing by, by, by approximating this, our error is 
0.24 minus 0.33 in the module, right? The error is equal to the 0 0.09. 0 0.09, right? This is the error which we made by approximately calculating the area, okay? So how to make this error smaller? Because our point is we calculate this integration approximately, right? But the error should be smaller by making the n to be bigger, right? So if I make the sum, so the sum of f of xi multiplied to the delta x, where i goes from 1 to the n, and if I take its limit when n goes to the infinity, it appears it becomes exact result, okay? So this will be exactly the integration of the f of x in the interval from a to the b, okay? This is the definition of the definite integral, okay? Again, we needed the limits in order to define them. So previously we defined the derivatives using the limits. Now we're defining the integration using the limits, okay? So we need this definition in order to understand what is the integration, right? The conceptual idea of the integration is the summation, right? Where we need to sum the function's value multiplied to the width, right? And also we need this formula in order to implement the integration to the computer where finding the integration analytically is difficult or impossible, okay? So tomorrow we will discuss more topics using the integration. So for today, that's it. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow.